Mario has been golfing in video games for longer than I've been alive, but the Mario series officially teed off on the N64 in the summer of 1999. And that is a great golf game. It might even be my favorite game of the entire N64 library. They absolutely nailed it, and by they, I mean Camelot Software, the development team behind the Mario Golf series. They followed up the N64 debut a few months later with Mario Golf on the Game Boy Color, a title which introduced RPG elements to the game and gave the series a fresh spin. My most nostalgic Mario Golf game came in 2003 with Toadstool Tour on the GameCube. My family would play against each other all the time, often ending in harsh feelings and soured relationships, a signature of the Mario multiplayer games like Mario Party and Mario Kart. But after Toadstool Tour, I took a long break from Mario Golf. So when Nintendo announced that Mario Golf was coming back in a big way with Mario Golf Super Rush on the Switch, I was all set to dive back in. And while Mario Golf Super Rush is certainly not a bad game, it's a bit of a shank off the drive. Here's my review. The Nintendo Switch is struggling right now. Game after game is being released with frame rate issues and some really unfortunate looking textures. It's gotten so bad to the point where the appeal of being able to play any game on the go isn't enough for me to accept the hit in visual fidelity and performance if I can get the same game on the PS4 or Xbox. That being said, Nintendo almost always finds a way to make their games look fantastic on their hybrid device, and Super Rush is no exception to that. The colors are vibrant and the environments are very appealing. Some of the interiors of the clubhouses look amazing, both in their design and their presentation. The golf-attired Mario characters are, for the most part, really fun models. Especially Wario, Waluigi, Bowser, Bowser Jr., Rosalina, and Toad. The menus are clean and slick, and altogether, Super Rush looks great in nearly every aspect. The game is also strong on the course. Gameplay is likely what you'd expect from a golf game. You have a meter that you use to make your shots, but unlike most other golf games, the meter is vertical. Instead of using a horizontal mark to decide if and where you slice a shot, a slice can happen at random, and depends on how hard you're hitting the ball, which club you're using, and your golfer's control stat. Even when you perfect the controls and the timing, you may still run into issues, just like in real golf. You also have the ability to hit lob shots, shots with high or low arc, and you can put some spin on the ball to affect the run once it hits the ground. Weather will also affect your shots as the wind will guide the ball once it's airborne and rain will slow down the ball's roll on the grass. The mechanics are familiar enough to pick up and play, yet different enough to make things feel a bit fresh. There is more to gameplay, but I want to jump ahead to modes to help explain some of the more arcade style features. The main modes of play in Super Rush are Standard, which gives you the ability to do stroke or point play, Speed Golf, which tasks you with finishing the round with the fastest time, each shot adding 30 seconds to your total time. This can be played with a high score goal where 1 in 4 points are rewarded according to how you finish each hole, or via best time where the fastest time wins. Battle Golf is similar to Mario Kart's battle mode, as it sticks you and your opponents in a large arena, plops down a few holes, and awards the win to the first golfer who captures 3 holes. You can adjust the amount of craziness by adding rush events, which throw different items and effects at you, and also by adjusting the terrain so that it's more or less difficult to get around the map. It's absolute chaos with everything turned up. Solo Challenge is a personal best style mode with score attack and time attack sections. But the main mode of Super Rush in my eyes is the adventure mode, and that's where the game really starts to falter. Now, you remember earlier when I said I was all set to dive in with Super Rush? That's because Nintendo touted an adventure mode, an RPG-style single-player campaign where you take your Mii character, learn how to golf the Mario way, build up your stats, and unlock new courses to play on. And I guess I can say they delivered on that. This is certainly an RPG-style single-player campaign, but it's just not much more than that. Your me starts as a scrub and is told that one day, through hard work and practice, you can be golfing with the best of them. You're given main quests and sub quests in a somewhat linear fashion, and completing these tasks earns you experience to level up your me, and they'll kick in some coins to spend on equipment as well. Depending on how quickly you can pass through these quests, and if you actually utilize the items available to purchase, 
which the game doesn't do a great job of leading you to, then adventure mode will probably take you less than 10 hours. It felt like I was just getting warmed up when the game said, you saved Mario Golf World, good on you, now go golf. And that's it, it kicks you out to the main menu and you can then play exhibition modes. I'm not totally ragging on adventure mode, it's a neat little romp that does actually make you better at the game, but none of the characters you talk to have voice dialogue, and a lot of the chatter is just throwaway stuff that you probably shouldn't even spend your time bothering with. Another issue I have with the mode is how far it shifts in tone. During the first half you're trying to learn how to properly play golf, like you're going to enter some tournaments and make a career out of it, and the last half you're battling bosses and playing Super Rush's arcade style modes. It doesn't feel consistent at all, and honestly feels slapped together in a lot of spots. With Nintendo charging the full $60 for Super Rush, I just expected a lot more than what's actually there. Which brings me to what this game is really, truly about. It's a multiplayer game. Yes, you can play Super Rush without ever playing with another human being, but the true fun is in those multiplayer environments, especially when playing the speed or battle modes. Each character has a unique dash that allows them to speed across the course and knock other players and their balls out of the way at the cost of stamina, which can be replenished with items on the course. Each player also has a special shot that can be built up during a round and unleashed at the player's discretion. There are wacky hazards and enemies also trying to knock you off the course. Camelot really succeeded by coming up with ways to make a fairly boring sport extremely exciting and competitive. Online is also available if you don't have anyone to play with in person. You can also, of course, play the CPU, but their AI is not great. I also noticed some slowdown when there were four players on the screen and a lot going on on the course. Mario Golf Super Rush is a very solid game, but comparing it to a game like Everybody's Golf, which came out a few years back on the PS4, I would say it comes up well short of that bar, at least when it comes to single player content. Don't go into this game looking for Adventure Mode to be the ultimate golf RPG because it's just not that. Not even close, really. However, if you have a good group of friends to play with, Super Rush can be an outstanding time. Just know what you're getting yourself into before you go paying your dues to get on the course.